Oh, you want to do it? Is the Korea ready or no? Huh? Miss Moore, let a be that a night or a lawyer, son. Be not a shy bit, sir. I need a man who caught גם כי אלך בגי צל מוות, לא ירערם, כי אתה עמדי. שבתך ומשענתך, המה ינחמוני. 
Karoch lefanai shulchan neged zorerai di shanta vashem roshi kosi revaya achtov achesed yeredefuni kol yamei chayai v'shafti bebeit adonai. Leorech Yamim As Kenner Shifman began our service chanting Psalm 23 in the Hebrew, you're welcome to join with me in the Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today is a difficult day. We gather to remember such an incredible woman, to share words of praise, of thanks, of honor, of love, as we recall with great affection a beloved wife, a beloved mother, a beloved stepmother, a beloved sister, aunt, a beloved doctor, confidant, counselor, advisor, colleague, and true friend, Dr. Jane Steckler. Our Bible teaches these words, A season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time for planting and a time for reaping, a time for keeping and a time for discarding, a time for embracing and a time for refraining, a time for laughing and a time for weeping, a time for dancing and a time for wailing, a time for birthing and a time for dying, a time for speaking and a time for silence, a time for seeking and a time for losing. Our beloved Jane has departed from this world, leaving a good name, and we believe she's returned home in peace to heaven, leaving behind so many in mourning her son Andrew and daughter Sonia, stepchildren Laura, Paul, and Claudia, her brother John and Shirley. Jane now joins her beloved George, married for nearly 40 years, her parents Catherine and Marvin, her brother James and Mary. She rejoins them all in their eternal home in heaven. For sure, before I share some words about Jane, it was so special. Andrew and Sonia picked out a special poem that they thought would only be fitting to read from one of her favorite poets, Mary Oliver, called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. None of us will ever forget Jane's smile. It was big and wide. It radiated warmth, true kindness, and the sheer joy with which she embraced life every single day. Always welcoming and non-judgmental, Jane was an eternal optimist 
always looking forward. She delighted in the little things, and it didn't take a lot to make her happy. Incredibly resilient and strong, she put up a valiant fight, always keeping her great sense of humor. Jane had, as we say, a good neshama. She truly was a good soul. She lived with empathy and compassion, always putting others first. She was curious about the world, about people, about words. She had an intellectual curiosity, a lifelong learner. She had an adventurous streak. She loved the outdoors and nature. She loved all types of animals and wildlife, especially birds, and of course her golden retrievers. Incredibly intelligent, she loved to read, always reading a pile of books or poetry all at once. She was creative and artistic. She loved the arts and culture, going to the theater and orchestra with her beloved George, and of course, listening to him play his jazz. Her favorite, though, was classical music. She was an artist herself, a poet. She won WCLV's Valentine's Day Poetry Contest. She was a gifted photographer. You could frame her doodling. Her fabric and textile work were sought after. As you might know, Jane made talitot, our Jewish prayer shawls, hand-making them. And she would work with so many of our bar and bat mitzvah students and their families designing and picking out all the fabrics and the seamstry work, making sure that that holy wrapping would truly elevate them every time that they connected with God and came to synagogue. Jane loved her Judaism. We were so honored that B'nai Yeshurun was her spiritual home, her community. Jane was a gifted Torah reader and Megillah reader for every holiday. But in the end, we all know, Jane lived for family, an incredibly devoted mother and wife and sister and friend to all. Jane hailed from Lafayette, Indiana, the middle child of three sandwiched between her brothers. John, you shared with me fond memories of your childhood with Jane, how your brother bought you both J.C. Higgins bicycles. You learned to ride them together. How even at a young age that your sister was a gifted writer, you told me at age 12, she won the, locally, the local grocery store chain essay contest, winning a doll. You told me that uh, you were always so proud of her, not just then, but always. That you shared that from the beginning, she loved nature and birds and the arts. Jane grew up in a traditional home. Her father believed that a woman could either be a teacher or a secretary. That wasn't for Jane. Jane wanted something more, and so she left the house after high school and moved herself to Illinois to attend North Park College and put herself through undergraduate studies and graduate studies at Case, pursuing her doctorate in psychology. And it was there in college, that small liberal arts school in Chicago, where she volunteered to host a Swedish exchange student. She taught herself Swedish so that she could be prepared for her friend Gunnell's arrival, and they became lifelong friends. As I said, Jane's graduate work brought her to Cleveland and to Case. It was here where she met her beloved George. The story goes like this. And I'll mention that it's actually different than what we recounted because I have in my notes what your mom told me. So if it's okay, I'll share, I'll share mom's version. The story goes that they first met in the hospital, not seeing patients. They were both patients themselves. George was having knee surgery, and Jane was there too. A nurse turned to Jane and said, you have to meet this other psychologist that's here. She thought it would be a good match. So Jane got up the courage and made her way over to George. But the whole time that they were talking, he could only complain about his aching knee. In Jane's words, that was quite a turnoff. She was unimpressed. Well, about a year later, a mutual psychologist friend was throwing a party that they were both invited to. Jane had heard that George wanted to meet her again. But Jane that day had a full day of work 
and she was extremely tired and decided not to go to the party. It just so happened that Jane's cleaning lady was working the party. She called Jane and told her to get over there right now, that George was waiting for her, and if she didn't come, he was going to leave and she was going to miss her chance. Well, thankfully, Jane sought the advice of a trusted counselor, the cleaning lady. Jane headed over to the party. They met again, and in Jane's words, this time there was no complaining. We just hit it off. Suddenly, neither of them were tired. They stayed very late into the night at the party, talking all night long, and the rest is history. They were married in November 1976 and spent nearly 40 years of loving marriage together, working together, playing musical games together, and raising Andrew and Sonia together. Jane was the best mother, easygoing and supportive. All she cared about was your happiness. When you were little, she wanted you to explore and have fun. She didn't care if you got covered in mud or anything else. Always generous with her time and love, You'd always take family hikes in the metro parks. Summer vacations were the two-week driving vacations down to North or South Carolina on the beach, swimming and fishing and taking walks and sightseeing. She took incredible pride in both of you, her children. You were her life. She always talked about you and these past few months and years, you've returned that love and care, taking care of mom by her side. Andrew, you told me that you are grateful that mom gave you the tools to live an interesting life, to always be curious about the world and people, not to be scared to try something new or different. A gifted psychologist, Jane was an excellent listener who made a difference in so many lives, known for her pediatric and adolescent work working with teen victims of abuse. In this region, she was known as a preeminent doctor working with adolescent LBGTQ patients, and those in transition. During the pandemic, her practice expanded to significant work with adults as well. She loved her work. Her patients meant everything to her. And just a few months ago, actually just a few weeks ago, when she had to close her practice as she finally entered hospice care, she had rebounded for a time period, feeling better, a little stronger, and she specifically told me, why did I say goodbye to my patients? Because I can still help them. That was Jane. She cared about them until their last day. She was an active member of the American Society for Clinical Hypnosis and used it as a therapeutic modality. Jane loved to cook soups in the winter, brisket stuffed cabbage. She baked her special chocolate cake with that white meringue frosting and her homemade ice cream. She loved to search through her cookbooks and online, always adventurous in the kitchen. She'd find a new recipe, always writing them out by hand to follow. She loved gardening and had a special talent to grow orchids. Jane was such a special member of our congregation, B'nai Yashurin. I was honored to work with her on her bat mitzvah speech. I remember around 20 years ago. She wasn't 13 years old, a couple years older. But her Torah portion is called Ma'aseh, which describes the winding journey that the Israelites took during their 40 years in the desert. And I remember more than about 20 years ago that Jane then shared deep insights connecting the journeys of her own life that made her who she was that led her to that moment of celebrating her bat mitzvah. We're all grateful for her friendship and for the active role and role model that she was in our congregation. Jane will be missed by so many, by all of us and so many more of those online. We can rejoice in Jane's good name, in her love, her spirit, her life, and her smile. She's returned home to her beloved George. We can surely say that she's at peace. May her name always bring blessings, and we say, Amen. I'm going to ask Cantor Schiffman to return as we all rise for the memorial prayer. Eloha <laughs> 
המצח הפר הפשע והקרבת ישם ומנוחה נכונה תחת תחת כנפי השכינה במלון קדוש וטהורים כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים אין נשמעת אריה לחנה בת אברהם ושרם שהלכה לעולמם ענה בעל הרחמים זכה לה לטובה כל זכויותיה וצדקותיה בארצות החיים ופתח לה שערי צדק ויורם שערי חמלה וחנינה בשאת כנפיך אזכיריה לעולמים וצרור בצור רחם ונשמתם אדוני ונחלתם ותנוע בשלום על משכבם ונאמר אמן. Oh God of forgiveness, you who are gracious and compassionate, patient and abundantly kind, for an infinite rest and sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of our beloved Jane, Ariella Khanna, who has gone to her eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that you remember all the worthy and righteous deeds she per- performed in this world. May our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May she rest in peace. And we say, Amen. Please be seated. Following the service, internment will follow at Chesterlin Memorial Park. The family will be receiving friends at the residence at the home, 24190 Halberton Road in Beechwood, today following the internment until 6 p.m., and tomorrow, Tuesday evening from 6 to 9 p.m. Those who wish may contribute to the Cleveland APL or Audubon Society in her memory.